Attacks on container ships in the Red Sea seem to be giving way to corporate America and their enthusiasm for price gouging. Now, I don't know about you guys, but why does it always feel like, you know, we're paying for all these different conflicts, for all these different attacks, as if it's our fault? Oh, there's another attack from Iran back Houthis? Guess the price of goods has to go up. Supply chains being constrained? Guess Americans have to pay out even more from our wallets. Oh, BP is going to be taking a longer route before they can deliver oil and gas shipments? Then maybe it's time to raise gas prices again. You see where I'm going with this, right? There's like no scenario where we win. We're taking heavy losses left and right. There's like no clear support in sight from the Biden administration, at least not for all of us. Here's the BP. Follow me this way. He is saying, there's a reason for his pricing here. If you've been around here, you've noticed the pricing as well at this particular BP. He says he's not changing his prices. Let's check him out right now. New touch screens here. Let's go like this with the contrast. Here, 409 for regular. Silver here, mid-grade, 509. 609, haven't seen something break five and six here, for high octane. The attorney general says she sent two investigators here after complaints this week, and she noted, and the investigators noted 475 a gallon here. She says that's excessive and price gouging. The owner tells me in no way this is price gouging, and here's what he means. Just 24 hours ago, Tom Roberts saw gas in San Antonio for 227 a gallon. When he stopped at the airport BP on Middle Belt, this price jumped out at him today. I couldn't believe how high it was. 409. And yes. then the premium, I have to go look, was 609. I know, that's crazy. Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel putting this station on notice to lower its gas prices. Uh, the state wants them to uh, stop doing that. <laughs> I don't blame them. <laughs> the AG's office sending investigators here this week, documenting prices topping out at 475 per gallon. Samir Patel noticed more than $6 a gallon for premium. That's ridiculous. Would I you get gas for that? No. So the owner of that BP branch assures us that this isn't price gouging. Oh, I promise it's not price gouging as he rushes to the bank. <laughs> so, you know, I want to ask you guys, do you think that them selling gas at these prices is to be considered price gouging? Just comment yes or no in the comments down below. And while you guys are thinking about that, make sure to drop a quick like for the video. Really appreciate it. Share it with your friends. Maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. Heck. For all I know, maybe even turn on notifications while you're at it. By the way, if you own a home, make sure your home is protected. Get your free home warranty quote. There's a link in the description down below of this video. It literally takes about 10 seconds. Appreciate it, guys. So, all right. So getting back to these attacks that are affecting global trade, we're seeing major shipping companies rerouting their vessels from the Red Sea. Matter of fact, they are now reporting this huge decrease in activity there, which means that even more companies are taking even longer routes, which means one more thing for consumers across the globe, higher prices for goods, maybe even shortages for all I know. More shipping companies are set to avoid the Red Sea following attacks on merchant vessels by Houthi militants. German container line Hapag Lloyd is among the latest to say it will steer clear. 25 of its ships will be rerouted before the end of the year. Hong Kong's OOCL is making a similar move. Ships will have to take longer routes to avoid the hotspot, and that could royal supply chains worldwide. The Suez Canal route accounts for about 12% of global trade. Costs will jump too, with the price of shipping a container from China to the Mediterranean up 44% just this month. Experts say anything that is moved by sea, from toys to food and clothing, could be at risk. Concern over disruption to supplies is driving commodity prices higher too. Metals prices rose Friday, as did benchmark oil prices. Crude jumped around 1%, though traders say the impact on supplies should actually be limited. Relatively little oil is shipped through the Red Sea. Much now depends on the International Naval Task Force being set up by Washington. The Pentagon says over 20 countries have signed up to take part, though some did not want to be named. Vessels from the US, British and French navies have already shot down Houthi drones in the area. On Thursday, UK Foreign Minister David Cameron met his Egyptian counterpart to discuss the crisis. It's absolutely essential that those maritime corridors, that the free movement of ships, of goods, of manufacturers, of oil, of world trade, that they keep going. The crisis grew out of the war between Israel and Palestinian militant group Hamas, which runs Gaza. Yemen's Houthis have threatened to target all ships heading to Israel in response. Now, what's even worse is that the attacks seem to be going even further and further. 
I mean, like just recently, an Israeli linked tanker was hit by a drone off of India's coast. Now you gotta wonder, is this a sign that things are about to get even worse? I mean, if we're talking about cargo prices, they're already getting worse. Ocean freight rates are increasing by 40% on some trade routes. Container prices are reaching upwards of $10,000. I mean, 10 grand folks. I mean, can you believe that? Ikea has already advised that they're gonna be facing delays in products reaching their stores, which means that we should expect more of the same with other stores that could possibly you know, create a domino effect to supply chains. More and more delays. You see where I'm going with this, right? And again, like what happens when demand goes beyond the supplies that we have? Now, I'm pretty sure you guys know, given that Americans are, we're now getting like a better understanding of how inflation truly works, right? So you see inflation slowing down. That is a fact, but it doesn't mean that the prices are going down. This is the lie that they try to propel. They're they're still going up, but at a slower pace. Now, the problem here is that a lot of Americans are realizing this fact way too late. Some even decided to listen to the narrative from the White House that things are actually getting better when we're like miles off from that kind of thing. But wait, what is the White House trying to tell us about the economy? White House is trying to sell this Bidenomics message heading into um, the election year, but we have a new Fox poll and it shows that nearly half of voters, 46%, say the administration's policies have hurt them. <coughs> and voters don't see the economy getting any better, they're twice as likely to see it getting worse next year. Why is that? So I'll say this, and we've talked about this many times, right? Um, the last few years have been challenging for the American people. We know that coming out of the pandemic, when the president walked into this administration, the economy was in a tailspin, it was. And so the president did everything that he can to make sure that we get this economy back on track. And we understand, we understand that Americans you know, feel like things are still unaffordable. We get that. Uh, and that is something that the president has said himself very recently. And that's why he's gonna continue. When it comes to, that's why the Inflation Reduction Act is so important. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't she use that same line of an economy on a tailspin where she was in The View? You know, The View with like Whoopi Goldberg and the other ladies. It's like they were programmed to answer a specific way once they hear specific keywords. You know what I'm saying? They have, they have these like talking points. All right, so we're gonna get this sorted out here right now. If you think that the economy was in a tailspin before President Joe Biden took office, just go ahead and comment one. And if you think that the tailspin happened after the Biden administration, comment two. And here's something else that I noticed. I'm not sure if you guys noticed it too, but do any of you think that President Biden is confusing lower rates of inflation with lower prices of goods? Does he think that those two work hand in hand? Because I'm pretty positive that like 99.9% .9 of the viewers from this community understands how inflation works. And that's not a good sign from the White House or for pretty much any politician who wants to go with the narrative that prices are going down. But again, we get back to our story of, you know, our initial story where companies are seeing price gouging, even though prices shouldn't be that high. Now, the problem is we're now in this economic setting where inflation and price gouging kind of seems to be working hand in hand. And with that, greed is not far behind. But what do y'all think? Do you think that the companies are taking advantage of the inflation that we're feeling right now? And are Americans just left to fend for themselves with little to no help from the federal government? Let me know what you guys are thinking down below. And before I go, I just want to thank y'all for hanging out. Keep safe and I'll see you on the next video.